Okay, hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel. Please excuse the chalk on my jumper. I haven't climbed in this, but there's chalk on it and I tried my best to remove it, but I didn't do a very good job, so. <laughs> hello everyone, welcome back to my channel and to another video and a new series on this channel, uh, I'm hoping. So this is gonna be a bouldering progression video so I'm going to be taking you right back to when I first started climbing all the way back in 2014 how many years ago is that a long time ago six years ago and I'm going to tell you my bouldering progression right back from v0 to where I'm climbing now which is around about v6 v7 on a good day so in this video I'm going to be taking you right back to when I first started climbing when I was a brand new baby climber climbing v0 and taking you all the way through to when I started climbing around about v4 so if you're in the UK the conversion to that is oh gosh font 3 through to font 6b plus 6c ish I think so that's from when I started climbing back in 2014 to around about 2017. And I had to dive back into my old Instagram for a lot of these clips, which was, which was a ride. So I've thoroughly enjoyed that. And now I'm gonna share them with you. So let's get into it. So before I get into the progression, I really wanna quickly have a word from the sponsor of this video, which is Skillshare. So Skillshare is an online learning community where you can go and take classes in a whole host of topics and subjects. Um, anything that you are interested in, there is likely a class for you to take on Skillshare to enhance your knowledge in that topic or your skill set. So as someone who enjoys learning new things and as someone who is trying to make these videos here on YouTube as engaging and interesting and creative as they can be, I have been enjoying using Skillshare to learn how to do things like illustration, animation, how to brush up on things like sound design. Everything that I do with my film and photography and writing is completely self-taught. So I've been finding taking the classes on Skillshare really useful to expand my skill set and my knowledge base because I feel like there's always more you can know about the things that you're interested in. Skillshare is less than $10 a month for an annual subscription and it's focused on learning which means that it is ad free. The first 1000 people to click the link in the description will get a free trial of Skillshare's premium membership. I really appreciate your understanding that sponsors really help me to push forward with this channel and to put time and resource into making these videos. So thank you very much for listening to the sponsor. Let me know what kind of classes you have been enjoying. If you do share, whoa, whoa, whoa. if you do sign up using the link below, then do let me know because I'd be interested in knowing uh, what classes you are enjoying on Skillshare. So I hope that you enjoy Skillshare and let's get back into the video. So I started climbing back in 2014 and I was in a wildly different stage of my life. Um, I'm not going to go too much into detail about that. I have spoken about it a little bit before on my channel, but I was in a, a really weird place and I wasn't really looking after myself or my body. Um, and it was around about the time that Nathan and I first met and had first started dating and one day, uh, because I had climbed a couple of times when I was in college, which in the UK is like 15, 16, 17, um, I suggested that we go climbing to our local wall, and we did, spent an afternoon climbing, and Nathan loved it, I loved it, and the rest is history. Um, six years later, we are still climbing, and Nathan is just as into it as I am. I think it's really nice to look back on these clips of me when I first started climbing because it really reminds me of how much I have improved and it's just really nice to see that progression and to remember that time when I was like fresh to climbing and I just thought it was the best thing ever and it was really changing my relationship with myself and I was meeting new friends and I just had found this passion for climbing which I hadn't known uh, existed and it was just a really exciting kind of pivotal if it's not too cheesy to say time in my life so when we first got the climbing bug I was climbing 
one to two times a week at my local gym which was the depot in Leeds if you're a UK climber then you've probably climbed at a depot climbing center before I started off climbing the depot whites and the depot blues which again if you're a UK climber who's climbed at the depot you'll know the whites and the blues I think span between v0 to v3 correct me if I'm wrong but I was roughly climbing uh, v0, v1, v2 and then maybe the odd v3 depending on how soft uh, those v3s were set. And I slowly progressed my climbing over 2014 until uh, in October of 2014 I have footage of me trying v3 to 5s which are the depot reds but you can see my technique was truly terrible and I think I probably wasn't getting up very many of them. I don't know what was wrong with me in 2014, 2015, but all of the climbing clips that I uploaded to my old Instagram are like 10 seconds long, so they're like half the climb, 10 seconds of the climb. I don't have any full climbs, which is strange. In the new year of 2015, Nathan and I uh, bought our first bouldering mat. Well, actually, Anita, Nathan's mum, bought us a bouldering mat for Christmas and we started climbing outside for the first time. We still have that bouldering pad. It's a little bit beaten now, but we still have it. And then in the February, are we on February of 2015, I bought my first pair of climbing shoes. I cannot remember what they were. Maybe they were the Scarpa Velocities, but I'll leave what they were here. And I would actually really recommend that pair of climbing shoes for beginners. They were my first pair. Um, my first pair that I actually had were a pair of um, decathlon climbing shoes, which actually served me very well. <laughs> but um, yeah, these, I think they were Scarpas. Uh, they, they were great and I would definitely recommend them for a beginner boulder. They weren't too stiff, they weren't too uncomfortable, but they gave me that little bit more confidence on edges and they're a little stickier. So we started climbing outdoors a little bit more in well, during that winter, we visited Armscliff for the first time, which if you're a Leeds-based climber, you will know, probably know Armscliff well. And then in the February of 2015, I climbed my first outdoor boulder problem, like topped out my first outdoor boulder problem, which was a five plus named Scuff, uh, which I still really enjoy climbing if we go to Armscliff. Um, but I do remember a lot of my early outdoor climbing days were spent um, having meltdowns about topping out. I found topping out really hard and scary. Um, so I remember having Nathan walk around the back of the boulder and dragging me over the top a couple of times before I committed to getting over it myself. But I got my first outdoor boulder. I was very proud. My first five plus scuff at Armscliff. And I also started lifting weights. So when I say lifting weights. I would go to the gym with Nathan because I was a little bit more interested in getting stronger and looking after my body in the right way. And I would just do kind of like a lower intensity of whatever Nathan was doing. So there's a few clips of me lifting weights, doing some squats, and that helped me to build that base strength in bouldering, which I do think really set me up nicely to improve. So it was in 2015 that I climbed my first indoor V5. So is that 6C plus? I don't know, I'll put it on the screen. But I don't think I was regularly climbing V5s in the gym at that point. And I def outdoors, I was definitely nowhere near climbing V5. I was still yet to climb my first six. We continued to climb a lot more outdoors throughout the spring and the summer of 2015 and I continued to make progress indoors. At this point I um, had been fueling my body better now for a year or so and climbing once or twice a week for a year so I was stronger and my body was changing and I was feeling more capable on the wall. My technique was improving, my finger strength was improving and I was just and still am <laughs> in love with climbing. But what I started doing around this time was I started entering my gym's league. So they had a winter bouldering league and a summer bouldering league. And it was one through 30 problems, each braided from V0 to V10, V9, harder than I was climbing. And um, 
you would get a score based on how many attempts it took you to climb the climbs and I found this to be a really useful marker for improvement. Obviously grading is always a little bit subjective and the sets were a little bit different so sometimes I would uh, get a slightly higher score or sets would suit me a little bit more but I, if you're new to climbing and you're looking to kind of measure your progress I would recommend um, entering the leagues and they don't have to be competitive they can just be a little bit of fun you don't have to enter your score you can just keep track of it yourself and for me that really helped me to measure uh, my progress where I was at and then in the next season maybe I would score slightly higher or place slightly higher so at this point I've been climbing for two and a bit years and I, in the April, I climbed my first outdoor 6A+, plus, which is a climb at Armscliff called Morel's Wall, which I actually, if I'm honest, I still struggle with this climb. It's definitely no gimme. Um, I think Yorkshire Grit has a bit of a reputation for being quite stiffly graded uh, anyway, but Morel's Wall, I will admit, I'll be the first to admit, I still find that climb really hard. The summer of 2016 I had my first bouldering related injury so I was climbing by myself indoors and I think I had a foot pop for a foot slip and as I was falling I outstretched my arm, landed on my arm funny and badly sprained one of the ligaments in my elbow. So then not too long after that arm injury uh, it happened. I heard the dreaded finger pop on the wall. I had really no prior warning. I didn't have any tenderness, any kind of trouble with it. Was crimping and popped. Didn't really hurt. Um, I dropped down, wiggled it around a bit, and it was only really till it was only really the next day that. Uh, I realised that I had done something seriously bad to my pulley. Well, I didn't know at the time that it was a pulley injury. I really wasn't that clued up on climbing finger injuries or how to prevent them, it seems. <laughs> um, so yeah, I must have taken maybe six or eight months off climbing, which was really hard because um, I loved climbing. But touch wood, that's the only time I've ever heard the pop and it wasn't good. It was horrible. But thankfully, at the time, I didn't really know what it meant. I just felt it dropped off and uh, it was only really afterwards that I knew what pulley tears and ruptures were. What I did manage to do during the time where I couldn't climb is keep up my gym work. So I kept up a certain degree of strength, I guess, like foundational strength. And then in the January, end of January 2000 and where are we in now, 17, Nathan and I took a trip to Bavaria. Pretty much the only holidays we take are climbing trips. Um, and if we're in a different city or away for another reason, we will check out the local bouldering gym. And that's just, we kind of say sometimes that uh, it's a shame we travel, say, to Amsterdam and just spend a day of that trip bouldering indoors. But honestly, checking out new climbing gyms is one of my favourite things to do. So whenever we go away now, uh, we'll head to the local wall, see what it's like, get a feel for the local vibe and yeah, always have a great time. After that trip, I upgraded my shoes again and I started bouldering indoors more. My finger pretty much healed which was lucky with a few tweaks here and there where I pushed it a little bit, but I was kind of back to full strength in my fingers and I was still entering the climbing leagues. Um, I cannot remember specific seasons or leagues, but I remember um, I placed 14th in one of the winter or the summer bouldering leagues. And then a couple of months later, I placed 10th and that for me was like, I'm improving. I've like gone up four spots. Uh, which was great. In April, I climbed my first outdoor 6B at a crag called Shipley Glen in Yorkshire. And um, again, like I still find this climb hard. <laughs> I definitely am not 
uh, guaranteed to get up this thing if I were to go and try it again. Um, I worked it for quite a long time and was like super pleased to get my first outdoor 6B. Uh, we had started to hear people saying things here and there about a place, like a mythical bouldering spot called Font. So we were quite keen to see what Font was all about. We'd heard that it was this like amazing forest with all of these boulders and uh, well worth a trip. So in the September of 2017, uh, we took a bouldering trip with our friend Tom and our friend James and we went for a week and it blew our minds. We arrived, um, it was still really warm, like end of summer warm and we just fell in love with the forest and pre-Covid we've been going uh, either every winter or every summer since and it's something that I personally have really missed this year along with most of the climbers I'm sure. I remember I, I set myself the goal of climbing 6A, a 6A in font. Again, font, as I'm sure you know, is notoriously hard sandstone uh, with notoriously hard top outs. But uh, I climbed my first 6A and I climbed my first 6C, um, which has since been downgraded to 6B first, but at the time, it was a 6C in the Forest of Fun. I climbed it on the last night with my friends around me cheering me up it and it was just a really good feeling um, to get my first 6C outdoors in Fun. So I figured that first 6C, that first V4 would be a good place to leave this video. I've taken you through uh, when I first started climbing to my first 6C in the Forest of Font. I do realise that this video was slightly self-indulgent, but I um, have watched a few of these now and it's just really nice to see um, someone right from when they started climbing and watch their passion for climbing grow and to watch them improve as they kind of get more into the sport. Um, I think they're really cool videos to watch. So. I really hope that you enjoyed mine. In the next videos, I'm gonna be taking you through V4, through to V6, V7, which is where I'm climbing at now. And then hopefully in the next few months, I will be able to update you on my progression from now to whatever I'm climbing in the next year or so. So that's the plan, that's what I'm gonna try and do. And I hope you enjoy.